Okay, so in a previous video, I gave some information that wasn't exactly true. Or I should say wasn't accurate, right? Because there's a difference between lying and being wrong. In my case, I was simply wrong. And I'm going to tell you why I was wrong. Because I would never intentionally tell you guys anything false. Okay, this community got enough uh, misinformation as is. This new amp meter right here is a pretty good one. The voltage seems pretty accurate. I got this from Harbor Freight. Cost me about a hundred bucks or so. And as you guys can see, these uh, clamp meter, these clamps on here, or this clamp on here, have these little arrows on it. These arrows uh, allow you to see if you wish, depending upon which wire you're testing, what direction this thing need to be going in. The current flow Wherever the current flow is, that's where the wire needs to be oriented through these clamps. Okay? And this clamp can actually measure the amperage from an AC and DC system. Right now, we're doing DC. The amp meter that I used in a previous video was actually only suitable for AC voltage. So it was a misreading on my part. Okay? I caught that, and now I'm doing a video to clean that up. And in this video, I'm going to be measuring amperage across each of these devices to show you guys not only the importance of amp draw and knowing what your amp draw is, but how to combat it and how it contributes to voltage drop and the need of aftermarket components such as high output alternators and ultra capacitors. And even in some cases, lithium banks. That and more coming right up. All right, guys, so this video here should be quite quick and simple. Hopefully, it'll be quick and simple, but who knows with me, right? But anyway, I want you guys to focus on this device right here. This is a clamp meter. So basically what I'm primarily going to be using this thing for is measuring amperage or amp draw. Let me get him over here in the white. I think you guys will get a better shot at it if I give it give it his own space. Okay, let's let's talk about this guy for a minute. Alright. Now this thing does a whole lot. Alright, it does amperage, DC and AC uh amperage. Cause it's a clamp meter, right? You push that and it opens up. Okay? So it does AC and DC. Alright? It does voltage, so you can measure voltage. Okay? So it can be a voltmeter. It actually comes with leads as well, but I'm not going to connect them right now. They look just like these leads here. Actually, you can put those leads in here, but this is not what we got this for. All right, we got a voltmeter. We already got a, a multimeter to measure, to measure voltage and all that stuff. What we got him for is his ability to do AC and DC current. Okay, but he does all this other stuff as well. Okay, in case you guys are wondering what all it can do, it does frequency, it, it does near current, near contact voltage. I think that's what NCV stand for, and it does a whole lot of other stuff, but. The functions we're going to be using it for are amperes. You got an auto mode that can measure 600 amperes. Okay, and then you got what they call a high amper uh, mode that measures anything up to 1000 amps. Okay, those are the two we're going to be using for. I'm going to put it on auto and then I'm going to come down here and use the max min feature. The max min feature is going to let us know what our maximum current draw is when we're testing. In my case, I'm going to be using a 120 amp converter. Okay, this is what you use in your home when you want to power any of your car audio electronics. Okay, so basically, I'm going to be taking this converter and I have it connected to a 12 volt AGM battery. The AGM battery is connected to a uh, ultra capacitor, and it will give you a total of 375 farads. Okay, this is ultimately connected to an amplifier. This amplifier is the Tiamps MD8000.1. This is an 8,000 watt amplifier, 8,000 watt RMS amplifier at one ohm. I'm going to be pushing signal from 
this Samsung 10 inch Galaxy Tab A or Galaxy A Tab is going to be connected to this Pioneer DEH 150. That's my head unit in your car. It can be whatever. And catching the signal is going to be this guy right here. This is the Toro Tech Force 12S. This is a 2000 watt RMS SPL subwoofer. It is in a two and a half foot cubic foot enclosure after displacement and it is tuned at 35 hertz. This is the Creighton 6S Truggy right here. This has nothing to do with the test but so many people ask about this thing. This is uh, from a company called Arma. Okay. This is going to come into question when I hook up this guy right here. These are my headway cells. Okay, this is a 64 amp hour pack that I'm going to be actually testing next on this system right here. So when I when I go into detail about the lithium technology in here, I'm going to bring a, a, a my experiences with lithium packs or technology, I should say. And that's where this guy's going to come into play. That's why I brought him in the lab. Because he run off a 6S pack. But we're going to get into that later. Uh, right now, what we're talking about is the amplifier. So, a lot of people have questions about whether or not they should get an aftermarket alternator. In order to know whether or not you need another alternator in the first place, you need to test your system's voltage. Okay? Once you test your system's voltage, it'll tell you whether or not you need an aftermarket alternator or not. That means that you come here, you turn on your system, and when you turn on your system, what you want to do is play your system. Play your system how you would play your system and measure the voltage while you're doing that. Okay? The reason why the voltage is so low because I don't have this on. Let me get this turned on. Alright, you guys should notice a noticeable difference in sound from this fan. The fan kicks on really. It really is really, I believe it's hardwired to the uh, power input. Because it speeds up as the voltage increase. If the voltage is low, it spins low at a low RPM. If the voltage is high, like now it's 2, two volts higher, it spins a lot faster. So there, it doesn't have its own independent regulating system, that fan inside of there. But anyway, um, so what you want to do is play your system as you would normally play your system. And what you want to do is monitor your voltage. If it drops below 13 volts, you need to either get some of this stuff you see here, which is a, some people would just get an extra AGM battery. Some people would get an ultra capacitor or a capacitor bank. A bank of supercapacitors is what they call that. Me, I went the easy route and just bought an all-in-one unit from Showtime Electronics. This is actually an excess power product. It's from a company called Ioxys, which excess power partnered with for a long time. Now they actually own it, I believe. They flat out own it now. But anyway, great product. Haven't had any uh, issues out of it. The capacitors don't store as much as the batteries, but they put out a whole lot more power in terms of discharge than this thing over here. But anyway, if that voltage dropped below 13, you're probably going to need another alternator. Now, right now we're talking about voltage drops. We're going to get into ample draw or amperage draw in a minute. Now, I do understand that some people's applications or some people's cars, vehicles, they is not an option to upgrade your alternator and I get that if you're in a situation like those guys who cannot who does not have the option of upgrading their alternator then you need something like this okay you need some lithium and let me get this out of you guys wait this is another review product I have to do but you're gonna need something like this I got this from battery hookup this is what is considered a beast module Right now, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, top balancing these guys, parallel balance of these guys, okay? So basically, when you top balance them, you put them all in parallel, and then you connect them to a charger up to whatever charge rating your cells would have. In my case, these are Headway 38120s, okay? And they have a, um, 
a nominal charge of 3.2. They have a bottom balancing charge of meaning you can dish drum all the way down to two volts. And I think they're full charge at like 3.65. But I got them right now floating. I actually I took them off the charger at 3.6. I didn't do 3.65. I do I did the whole pack at 3.6. I got video of that coming out. And then what I did, I left them for two weeks sitting like this in parallel. So what's happening is they're going to balance themselves. When you're dealing with lithium, you want to balance your cells. So they're balancing right now, and right now they're at a voltage of about 3.2 volts. Okay, they all balance at 3.2. But I'm going to do a capacitance test and everything on them, so stay tuned for that. But for right now, I'm talking about if you don't have an option to upgrade your alternator, get something like lithium and, and uh, add to your, your, uh, your already existing battery, or just get more batteries. You know, excess power, a lot of other guys, I'm not going to, I don't mean to name drop, but a lot of companies out there, Singer, a lot of these people have extra batteries that you can buy. Me personally, I got this from Advanced Auto. You know, some people go by names, name brands, I mean, if you're, if you're brand loyal, then be brand loyal. I'm not going to beat you up about that. I'm brand loyal with some things as well. But I go by the stats. This thing here is 70 amp hour. It got 120 reserve capacity. Okay? If you guys can see that. 120 amp hour reserve. 760 cold cranking ampers. 950 cranking ampers. Now, this will get your job done if you just wanted to use it as a starting battery. Or if you don't, you know, if you... You run it in your car, you're using it as a starting battery, it'll do it. But just know that once this thing give you 950 amperes, it's going to drop the voltage so low. You know, so you're going to need another one to compensate for that if you're having voltage drops. And I'm going to show you in this video why you get voltage drops. Okay, so now that we know what voltage drops are, we're going to show now what causes your voltage to drop. When you're dealing with car audio and you're dealing with amplifiers, it doesn't even have to be an 8,000 watt amplifier. It can be a 1,000 watt amplifier. It can be a 500 watt amplifier. If it draws a lot of current, if it demands those electrons to flow through the system very, very quickly, then you're going to have a voltage drop. Some systems more so than others. Any voltage that drops more, really more than one and a half volts, that's my philosophy. If you're, if you're consistently dropping a volt and a half, you're in danger territory because there, that's, that's too much fluctuation in the system. Electronics don't like choppy sine waves. Okay, so when your voltage is dropping like that, it interferes with the smoothness of the electrical current. When you interrupt the smoothness of that flow of that sine wave, that's when you get lights dimming and stuff like clipping. Those electronic components have capacitors and resistors inside of them. And you're getting surges and drops in voltage. It's going to cause heat in your system. And those components are going to have a premature death. That's why you don't want that. You don't want your voltage dropping too much. Okay? So that is the danger of, of voltage drops. So now that you know that ampers or severe amp draw is what causes voltage drops, we're going to see how to measure that across your system. You have your alternator. That's a that's a that's a, a voltage supply unit. You have your battery, which is which is an energy storing component. You have your capacitor, which is it's also an energy storing component, but not so like the battery. The battery is it has a, a greater density to it inside of it than the capacitor does. The capacitor can still I mean it packs a hell of a punch, right? But its key features isn't in is not in its ability to store energy or its capacitance. Okay, how much energy it stores. Its key features are in how quickly it can charge and discharge the deliverance of that energy, which is why it's sitting right here next to the amplifier. And of course this guy here is what's demanding that unit. You're really all of this is to supply this guy right here. These two are, are really assisting this guy right here. You don't want him to overstrain himself because he has to run the whole system. Okay, in your car and your automobile, this would be your alternator. These two are helpers. 
These two here, the cap and the battery, are helpers. This guy right here does all the work. They store and make sure he don't get strained. And I'm going to show you guys that. Even though this is a 120 amp uh, device, it's not going to have to supply. It should not, with these two in line, it should not supply, I don't think, over 100 amps. But we're going to see. I may be wrong about that. This guy right here, I'm thinking what's going to happen is because this guy's getting topped off and this guy here is directly connected to it, he has the greater delivery, so we're going to see a higher amp draw coming from him to him. Over here, we should see maybe 25% of what his amp draw is is going to be coming out of him, and he's going to have to take up for about, I don't know how quickly, he would he would have to supply what he lost. So you may see about 75% of his of its ability being used in this in this video. So if it's a if it's a 120 amp power supply and if it can do 120 amps, I don't even know if it can really do 120 amps, but Power Max have a great name and reputation. So if it can do truly 120 amps, I would say we we may see close to 100 amps but not 100 amps. But I, I don't know, I'm not an expert in this stuff. I'm just guessing. But he's going to do most of the work. He's going to help a little bit, but he's going to be given even more than him because he's slow. He's the slowest one out of this whole setup. The battery, the lead acid technology is the slowest one. Okay, now that you know what Amp Draw is and how it pretty much changed to this guy right here, it's like all this stuff is daisy chained together. He's going to demand it. He's going to give the brunt of it when he, did, when he gets to depleting himself. He's going to kick in and then this guy here has to work. If you are enjoying this video and would like to learn a little bit more about how to simplify car audio, please consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Alright, and for those who don't know about this device right here, this is an SMD AMM1. This is an audio multimeter. Okay, that's what AMM1 stands for. This thing right here can measure real world power and also do dynos. So I'm going to be leaving it on during the testing and we're going to, um, we're actually going to be catching the, the impedance rise and the wattage in real time, okay? So in case you guys are wondering what this guy is, that's what he's for. Now, one thing you got to know about this, this meter right here, bring him back over here to the white wall, the one thing I want you guys to, to know about this guy is if you turn to the side, there's an arrow right there. Okay? That arrow means that whenever wire you putting in through these, these jaws right here, these clamps, that's the flow that the, um, the current has to be in. Okay? In this case, if you guys look over here, the energy is going to be flowing out of this guy into the battery. Okay, this cable here is coming out, so it's flowing in that direction. This arrow needs to be pointed in that direction. Okay, so in other words, it needs to be clamped like this. Whenever you're measuring DC, okay, whenever you're measuring DC and you're on the positive cable, it needs to be flowing that direction. Whenever you're measuring on the negative cable, Okay, that's a negative symbol. It needs to be flowing in the you know that way. So basically, depending on which wire you're clamping, you got to make sure that it's going in that direction. Okay. So we're gonna clamp it like that, and we're gonna be taking a look at it. Boom. So let's get them turned, and there we go. Now, see right now we're trying to measure AC. This is DC. So we're gonna hit function. Now we're in DC mode. And as you guys can see, it's drawing four amps right now, almost four and a half amps. Because remember, at rest, this guy right here has like a two amp draw or something around that, that neighborhood. At rest. So that's his energy consumption at rest when it's doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. So keep that in mind, guys. And also, I found interesting is the remote wire. Watch this. Remember, this remote wire is going into here, so you got to follow the arrow that way. So it has to go in this way. If you guys can see that. That's the direction it has to go. So let's look at the amp wire. 
I mean the uh, signal wire. It's pulling almost an amp by itself. So the power supply has to supply all of this. All right. So let's look at this. You see that 2.68 amperes being drawn by this amplifier just sitting at rest. It's not even on. It's not. I mean, it's on, but it's not doing anything. I, I think it got something to do with those fans on the inside because the fans never go off. You see that? The fans never go off on that thing. But anyway, enough of that. Let's go ahead and get this test set up. Okay, guys, so we have a 35 hertz test tone ready for the bench. And what we're going to be doing, like I said, we're going to be coming over here to the amp meter. We're going to be using the DC function and we're going to be testing the amp draw first coming from the converter to the battery. I want to see what this looks like. But you know, I'm curious to see what this looks like first. Because I know he's going to draw a lot from him. Nah, let's have some fun, man. Let's do this one first. I think this one's going to give us our biggest number. So, start from where it's at, right? Why start from the, from the alternator? We're going to see how much this thing is actually drawing from the capacitor. This should be interesting. I think it's going to be... Ooh, I didn't think of this. Those are 300 amp fuses. I hope they don't blow... I doubt if it's doing 300 amps though. I think it's probably doing close to 200 and something. About 200. A little bit over 200. We should be good. But we're going to see. <clears throat> I hope it doesn't blow. I know some people don't even run fuses this, you know, in between their power source and the amplifier. They don't even run it. But I put that there. You know, because this is how I run things in my vehicle. I will put a, um, a fuse in between everything really. So basically, this thing at max, which is not going to be maxed out with this system, it has a 700 amp uh, current rating. So this thing can draw up to 700, over 700 amps. So it'll blow that, you know, in a real world system where you had all the power that it needed. It'll definitely blow those little 300 amp fuse. But I want to see how close to 300 amps is going to get on this setup right here. That'll be interesting. But enough yap, let's get to it. Alright, so we're going to come over here, and I'm going to try to get all this stuff going for you guys, man. Let's make sure our voltage ain't doing nothing crazy. It's on about 15, 20. That's good. So we got real-world power. That's your wattage. We have voltage, measuring voltage drop. Over here we got amperes. And this is our clip meter. Okay? This is our clip and protect meter. Let's look. There we go. Clip and protect. Clip is thick is orange and protect is red. The lights inside of it. But enough of that. Let's get this show on the road. We got everything ready, guys. Let's hit play. Boom. Let's take this sucker till it clip. All right. Did I hit DC? I did hit DC. All right. Right now, we're only pulling 16 watts. It's barely doing anything. So let's get this thing turned up. And I'm going to let y'all see this in real time. Alright, there we go. Hopefully I can get everything in that shot. Alright, that's up to clipping. I don't know what just fell off the shelves, but... Oh! We got an overload. We got an overload, guys, so that went higher than what it can even measure. What? That's the minimum. Overload. What? I'm going to put it on this then. This measure up to a thousand. I can't believe that. There's no way this thing did 600 amps. No way, man. I'm not going to use min max. I want to see this in real time, what it looks like. I'm not even going to use min max. We're just going to focus on this guy for now. We're going to focus on him only. We'll put this on DC. And we ain't going to take our eyes off of it. We're not going to take our eyes off of it. We're gonna, I'm going to do the same thing until it clips. Maybe I'll give y'all a little clip, clip shot and voltage. But in case you guys are wondering, that's the uh, real world po power. We got at 3.1 at ohms. 
we pull 3,700 watts. Okay, and that's the Toro Force 12 S showing out. It's taking it. It don't smell. It don't get warm or nothing. That thing ain't a beast. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna uh, once again get this going all the way up to clipping, guys. I don't know about you guys. I've seen about 340 uh, amps. I'm going to do it again. Hell yeah. Y'all want to see what this guy look like? At, at 3,500 or 3,700 watts. This way it looks like. Whoa, shit. Stuff hitting me on top of the head, guys. Damn. <laughs> it's not a good idea. I'm sorry. It's not a good idea, man, to put 3,000 watts in a room this small, man. But hey, I'm having fun. Did you guys see that, though? What I tell you guys? Let me let me uh, stop this. So, what we just learned? What we just learned is that the capacitor is supporting over 200 amp draw. 200 amperes from the uh, amplifier. That's what it's, it's giving it directly. Well over 200 amperes. The capacitor is supplying a lot of power to this guy right here, man. But it still clips. I didn't even focus on the voltage, guys. I'm sorry. But most of the clipping is due to voltage. Most of the clipping. Because I don't, I don't really think this guy here... I don't want to judge it harshly. I don't even know yet. So we're going to move. I don't think he's really giving 120 amps, to be honest with you. But I'm going I'm to move it from here, okay? And we're going to move it here. So why would I move it there? I want to see how much is actually coming out of the battery, okay? Before I even replace it, we're going to compare the results we get from this battery and that battery. Okay, and 64 amp hours, 70 amp hours. The difference between those two technologies is this. You're only using about 50% of this guy, maybe 60, 70%. It's an AGM, but it's not a deep cycle. But it is AGM, it's an absorbed glass mat, meaning that you can handle it a little bit different than the other ones. It's an AGM, it's better than a flooded in many, in some ways, but it's not a deep cycle. Okay? So you ain't you ain't using all 70 amps. The 70 amp hours over here, you ain't using all that. Okay? You're not using all of it. As far as reserve go, you can get that. You can get the 120 reserve reserve. But this guy right here, the 64 amp hours, you're getting like 90% of that. Whereas over here you're getting like 50, maybe 60%. And that's if it's brand new. But enough of that. We want to see what the amp draw is from the battery. What is this supporting in the system? How many amperes is coming out of this guy? Alright, we're going to reset this. Doesn't even really matter with this, to be honest with you, because we're really testing amp draw, not power. We see how much power this thing can put out with what it's dealing with. I think it clips due to low voltage, you know? But anyway, all this time, this is another good test. All this time I've had the uh, voltmeter, the voltage being tested from the battery. I wonder what this capacitor is doing. What is the voltage from the capacitor? That would be a good test, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think it would be. One guy, man, in the comments, he let me have it. He seen me poking holes in my in my wires. He was like, this dude did not, did this dude just really poke the insulation on his wire, his own wire? I was like, dude, chill. It's a, it's a small hole. It's not like I'm living in a climate that's that humid that it's going to corrode anything and plus this is marine grade wire I'm good okay but anyway long story short we're going to be measuring the voltage again uh, but this time it's going to be on the capacitor I can't believe the min max overloaded man that was crazy it's supposed to be able to handle 600 I guess not but anyway let's get the uh, only thing I'm going to be doing guys is hitting play and turning that knob till it clip. That's all I'm going to be doing, okay? So we're not going to look at the speaker no more. We're going to be looking at this volt, this amp meter and volt meter. Here we go. Ah, I wish y'all got. I wish the glare wasn't there. 
but it's not perfect. Let's get it. I can see it. Let's get it. Look like I seen 91. 91 amperes. Now let me look at this voltage again. Do it again. Damn. Still got stuff falling on me, guys. Hey, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm sacrificing my office for you guys, man. Okay, anyway. Let me pick some of this stuff up. Hold on. Alright, that was fun. Let me stop this. No need of heating up all these capacitors for nothing. I just noticed... Oh, that's my inverter. My converter fan just kicked on, so it's extra loud in here now. These fans right here won't stop, and now these things are on, so that's what you guys are hearing. But anyway, uh, I'm glad it came on because it's getting tested next. So we've seen 91 amperes coming out of this battery. That's impressive. That's very impressive. 91 amperes. Now let's see what what's coming out of the converter. Okay, we know 91 amperes going to the battery, so that probably is consistent because it's directly feeding it. So I'm guessing it's applying about 90, about 91 amperes. But I don't know. I think I'm I'm looking to see something a little higher from him. We'll see. Let's get it. Back to back. Little little. It's just slightly higher. 91. Let's try min max. I don't know what was going on with the min max. So they have three modes. You got you got min max, max, and then you got min. Let's try min max. See what that's all about. There it is. It caught it that time. Let's look at this. Eighty nine. Max was 93. Min was that. That doesn't mean anything. Four doesn't mean anything. I guess that's a, like uh, the difference in between the two or the average. 93 was the max. Let's try that on the capacitor. Back to back, guys. It's not even warm. It's not this thing is cold, man. Let's try it back to back. Uh, let's see what we get. Min max again. That's on max. Min max DC. I'm gonna clear it out. Let's clear it out and start it over. Now put it on DC. Min max. That. Okay. But well, anyway, let's get it. There we go. The min max 226. I guess that's the average. The max was 229. Is what it caught. And the max is 229. That's after repeat runs. Repeat runs, guys. Woo! That's right. This Toro is amazing, man. I, I think I'm going to get me another one of them. It has not disappointed me at all. That, that subwoofer is amazing. For the price I bought it at anyway. For a company that I had never even heard of. But anyway, um, there you guys go. That's how you measure the amp draw across your components. Now, let me shut this stuff off so we can actually hear what I'm saying. All right, so what is the significance of a test like this? Okay, as you guys just seen, this thing draws a lot of current. And once it get proper uh power you know because right now i got an old ancient lead acid technology sitting there i'm going to get rid of that this can stay under your hood but back here by your amplifier you need something that got a little bit higher um delivery so when i say higher delivery what i'm talking about i'm talking about the discharge rate of it discharge rate of this is okay but it cannot sustain it continuously okay it can't do 900 what is this it cannot do 950 amperes continuously. It can't do that. It's going to deplete itself like nobody's business. But you know what can do? This thing right here is rated at 200 amps continuously. 200 amps. 
And as you guys can see, or as you guys just seen, this amplifier right here do really, really good at 200 amps continuously. We just gave it a sine wave at 35 hertz, which is what the box tune frequency of this thing is. That's what you want to do. Okay, that's how you want to do it if you're going to do it. But, but um, that's a grueling test on a subwoofer and an amplifier. Sine waves, pure sine waves, they're clean and they can handle it with adequate cooling. As you can see, this thing has its own cooling internally. And the subwoofer, as long as it's not being clipped, the signal itself, a pure sine wave is what it wants, okay? But it's still a grueling test on your equipment. Now, are you going to be running pure sine waves in your system? No, you're not. But if you're, if you're someone who likes to bang the block with your system, you know, or if you're someone who competes, you know, you really want to have your, your ducks in a row when you're talking about connecting your system. So when I say that some of you guys are going to need an aftermarket amplifier, this is the type of test you need to run to determine if you're going to need that. Because in my case, if this was a stock, I'm just looking at these three components right here. Okay? Looking at these three components right here, this is not enough to run a system, this amplifier on stock alternator. Because this thing pulled 90 something amps. 90 some. I don't know a stock alternator that's going to give you an extra 90 some amps. I, I just don't. Now, I, I had a comment or two saying that, you know, they know a stock amp, a stock alternator. I keep saying amplifier, a stock alternator that can give twice what the car demands. I don't know what company does doing that, but most of the ones I'm looking at, if you add sometimes a five to 600 watt, I mean, a 500 to a 1,000 watt amplifier to your stock system, you get your headlights dimming. You get your voltage dropping. So I don't know a, a manufacturer that's giving you an, an alternator stock that can handle almost 100 amps extra of current draw. I, I don't know one. You know, like some of you guys, I mean, like I don't know everything. I don't know everything about cars. I don't know even, I don't even know everything about all of our, uh, uh, car audio, but I do know from my experiences, from my experiences, I've never seen that. So if you plan on going and getting this amplifier and this subwoofer and all this stuff just because you've seen me do it, I'm telling you right now, your alternator is not going to hold up for that. This thing is showing you right now, you're going to need an extra 90, almost 100 amps to run this thing. And that's with these two components. That's with an extra battery. Well, I can't say, okay, in a car system, I guess this wouldn't be an extra battery because this would be like your starting battery, right? And this would be actually just by the amplifier in the trunk. So that's with a $500, well, I guess a $400 now. That's with a $400 um, super capacitor or ultra capacitor. Okay, so just, just think about that. You're going to need an extra 100 amps even though you got this thing sitting right next to your uh, amplifier. Thanks for visiting the channel to help you simplify car audio. It's the Budget Bass here and I'm out.